Hi everyone, hope you all are doing good. Today I'm so excited to share this new addition in my kitchen. For the past 20 years I've been using this stuffed top pressure cooker and this is the first time using an instant pot which I got for my birthday. Since I'm used to the stuffed top pressure cooker, I'm hoping this electric instant pot will not be difficult. So let's unbox, assemble and test it out. So keep watching. Welcome to Shine with Shops. This channel is all about making you shine with my healthy diet and building your emotional strength. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any new updates from me. I got this electric instant pot from Costco. It's on sale right now. I'm quickly flipping the box for you to see. I really like the package. It's very informative. On the top of the box, there is a sign which says you can download free Instant Pot app to access recipes. It says multi-use pressure cooker which can cook up to 70% faster than traditional methods using smart touch programs. Here's a quick reference guide to certain time settings. Here it shows how 9 appliances in one pot can be used efficiently. Now let's unbox to explore more. As I'm opening, it shows all the accessories and the cooker parts that's included in this box. This is a good thing because it gives me a checklist to refer if any part is missing. First thing on the top is the user manual. There are two of them. One is the safety and maintenance manual to take care how to clean and troubleshoot. And the other one guides you to get started, learn about the different parts. Also it has a quick time setting guide for various cooking methods. Next is the ceiling ring. This is an extra ceiling ring. It's very helpful to have one extra in case the one on the lid wears out. Here comes the cord. Some electric cooker comes attached. This is detachable so it's easy to pack and go. Removing the packing material. Let's unveil this beauty. I am so excited for this. I'm going to pull it out slowly from the box. They have packaged it very well, so it's easy to come out. Here is the whole instant pot and the last item in this box. Hopefully the rest of the items are going to be inside this instant pot. Discarding the plastic now. There. This looks beautiful and I'm so happy. In the front you will see all the touch buttons with smart features. This is the lid. There's a little safety piece. Pull off the pressure valve. It might look wobbly but that's how it is. See this is how it looks. Now you can remove this and you can see all the parts. I'm going to slowly open the lid, just twist anti-clockwise and remove the lid. Now I'm going to remove the items one by one. Let's see what's inside here. I'm opening it. I see a rice cup. That's nice. That's a good measuring cup. When I cook some rice, it'll come handy. And one rice ladle. And one soup ladle. In this we have a steaming rack. This is useful to steam some vegetables like potatoes or yam or any vegetables. There is a handle. You can put water underneath and put a small pot on top. 
And then there's the warning label which you can read. This will come in handy. So make sure to read all the information, whatever the warning signs are. And this must be the silicone gloves. I love the color red. Taking it out. And love the feel of it. Look how cute they are. These are so much fun. I'm like a child now. Hello, how do you do? Are you excited for this new instant pot? Oh yes, very much. Can't wait to see what's cooking each time. No matter what you cook, never forget to add some element of fun. The last piece is the inner pot, which is the most important piece. This is where you will be cooking your food. I love the size and the look of the stainless steel container. This size is sufficient for my family. There is another warning sign letting you know not to cook without using the inner pot. Make sure to read it. And this is the base. Do not ever put any food directly into this base to cook. That will ruin your pot. Always make sure to put the inner pot inside before cooking anything. This is very important. Let's move on to the parts of the lid. There is a grip handle and three important part. I'm putting the pressure valve back on. This is where the steam releases. And this is the float valve and there's a pressure release button if you need to use. I'm going to quickly show how it works by removing the pressure valve. When I press the button, the little lever pops up. It will help release some pressure. Also make sure to clean it well. Some food particles can get clogged in the pressure valve. I'm going to turn it around to show you how the ceiling ring is intact. You can easily remove the ceiling ring out from behind the ceiling ring rack. Always make sure that the ceiling ring is on the lid before cooking anything. So we have one on the lid and one extra which you can put it away safely. I'm going to put the ceiling ring back making sure that it secures behind the rack. Just push it through. The ceiling ring creates an airtight seal. So it's important that the ceiling ring is intact. Here's a closer look for you to see. There. That's how you should push it through and make sure it's sealed well. Now let's move on. This is a cap underneath the steam release valve or the pressure valve. It's an anti-block shield to protect any food from coming up through the steam. It can be removed, cleaned and pop it back in. Next to this is the bottom of the float valve, a silicone cap to secure it from falling off. This can easily be removed. Make sure that this is intact and the small cap is always on. Without the silicone cap, it will fall off. These are small minor things, but do take care that each part is intact. The last thing I want to show you is the condensation collector. This is placed on back of the cooker base. Just align it, push it into place. Excess water is collected here. You can empty it after use. In the front of the touchpad, there is a protective liner. If you wish to remove, you can easily remove. Next step is to assemble. The very first step is to place the inner stainless steel pot into the base. Never cook anything without this inner pot. Now I'm also going to place the steaming rack inside because I want to sanitize the rack as well while testing it out. 
When you're ready to cook, if you're not steaming anything, you don't need to place the steaming rack inside. Now here comes the lid. This is the front portion and that's the back. Hold on to the grip handle and carefully align it in place. You will note there is an open arrow and a close arrow. Also make sure that the middle arrow symbol on the lid is aligned with the arrow symbol on rim of the cooker. Turn lid counterclockwise to open and turn lid clockwise for closing. Let me show it to you from the back side when you close the lid. Make sure it fits the rim of the cooker and care enough when you open or close the lid. You can remember which way goes left or right. After a couple of times, you will get used to it. Now I'm going to take out the cord and fit it in place. This is nice, it is detachable so you can just pack it inside whenever you take it out or go somewhere else. So I'm going to plug it into the wall. There and time to test it out. When it's plugged in and when you try to open it will make this jiggle sound. Opening the lid you can even let it stand by placing it in the handle on one side. There. This is handy but never try to close it like that. You can break it. So always lift the lid and close it. You can place the same way on the other side. I'm going to leave it like this and test it out. The other thing to note is never fill water over the maximum line. Just be cautious about that. I'm going to pour 3 cups of water. The instruction is in the manual. It's very easy, just follow the direction from the user manual. Now close the lid carefully. You will see so many different smart programs on both sides. You just have to select pressure cook. As soon as you press, a set time of 10 minutes is displayed. Now select the minus key to reduce the time to 5 minutes. Now you'll see it's on. Just leave it in this position. You'll also notice the keep warm automatically turns on. If you want the food to stay warm, it's good for that. Right now we are just testing it, so I'm going to turn it off. The pressure starts to build up. You will see that the water will start heating up and pressure will start building up. Once the pressure builds up, the float valve will start wiggling and you will notice steam coming out. At this point, don't try to open the lid. Let it be like this until the float valve comes up. Come on, come on. You can do it. Yes. At this point, the cooking time starts. From on, it starts showing the time as 5 minutes. And then you can see how it shows end after the set time. Now don't open the lid immediately. The pressure needs to release completely. You can let it release by itself and can press the pressure release button to release it. I would normally wait but right now since I'm just testing all the functions and it's just water, I'm doing it this way. The float valve should go down. That's the sign showing the pressure is completely released. And then you can open the lid carefully. 
it will be hot so carefully open and unplug as you can see this is perfect the float valve is down the pressure is completely released and now it's safe to open be very careful if you are opening immediately it's going to be hot otherwise you can open later hope this video is helpful if you are new to my channel please check out my other healthy nutritious recipes link is in the description below i can't wait to try out more fun exciting recipes in my new instant pot stay tuned for that and don't forget to shine with shoes